Hello friends and welcome to my first ever reading vlog. So in this video, I'm actually going to take you guys through an entire week of reading. And right now I'm actually coming to you from Friday to introduce you to the vlog because I can't find the intro that I filmed on Monday. <laughs> I'm not used to juggling so much footage from so many different days. But on the bright side, I can tell you from the future that I got some pretty good reading done this week, including a book for Heartathon. And if you don't know about Heartathon, check out our announcement videos, which I'll link in the description below. I'm doing a Way of Kings re-listen in preparation for the Rhythm of War release in November. I'm hoping to get through one of each book over the next couple months, which puts me right in time to read the fourth book in November and a few other reads, including a surprise bag from my public library. So with all that said, let's jump into the video starting with Monday. It is about 9.30 a.m. and I'm just gonna make some coffee and I'm going to spend the next hour filming. I have to film two videos from my YouTube channel because I'm all out of videos. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm about to do. All right, coffee is done. I just like to put some cream in my coffee, but there's no, no sugar in here other than that. And now it's time to sit and shoot some videos. So I'm planning to film two videos today. Um, my July wrap up, and July was a really good month. I read a ton of books, which means that this video is gonna be probably a little bit longer than my other wrap ups. And then also a video on audiobooks on Kindle. And I'll probably go up mid-August at some point. So yeah, that's the plan and let's get right, to guys. it. It is almost noon and I have just finished filming uh, videos. I actually managed to get three videos knocked out, which is super nice. Um, I did my July wrap up, which was very long because I read so many books in July. And then I did my August TBR, which is super short. Um, I feel like I don't want to commit to TBRs anymore because then I feel so much pressure to read them and I always do um, but I want to keep them super short and that way I have a lot more leeway in terms of books that I want to add to that list and I also filmed a audiobooks on Kindle as part of my planned uh, Kindle series of videos so all that is out of the way I'm going to um, get my living room back in order and then I'm going to go pick up March from my library. All right, so I am finally making my way to my library so I can pick up the book that I have on hold. And like I said earlier, so the book that I'm planning to pick up is the graphic novel March by John Lewis. So let's go ahead and do that. And while I'm out, I've got a couple more errands to run. I have to go to UPS and I drop off a quick package. And I think that's actually it. So just those two things. So I think that I mentioned also that I um, am currently in the middle of listening to The Way of Kings audiobook. And I'm still in the middle of part one. So this is where so far, and by the way, if you haven't read this book and you're afraid of spoilers, you might want to tune out for a little bit. Um, this is again, my second reread. So I already know what's going to happen, but I'm currently at the point where Kaladin has just been dumped into bridge four. So I forgot, I actually had forgotten how he ended up in, in bridge four. And I forgot about his whole journey on the slave caravan. So that was um, important to remember. And the perspective has now shifted back to Shallan. And Shallan in the first book is trying to um, become a ward of Yasna. So she's traveled all the way to, uh, is it Karbrant that they're in, I believe? And she's petitioning herself to be Yasna's ward or uh, to be a part of her care, basically. And in the beginning, remember, she's trying to steal the Fabriel that Yasna has to save her her kingdom and her, her family name. And I had forgotten all about that ardent that she meets while she's um, waiting for Yasna in that in that massive library there. And he goes on, and, and it reminded me of what he eventually goes on to do towards the end of the book. Um, but yeah, so far it's still very slow. I am enjoying it more the second time around listening because I'm not as confused as I was the first time around. I already have a handle on the magic system that exists in this book. So 
so far so good all right so i'm at the library parking lot and it turns out i missed the pickup time it's only until 1 p.m and it is currently 2 p.m so i guess i'm gonna have to try again tomorrow um most of my own fault i stopped by to get a smoothie and do other errands and did not check the time so i guess i'm just gonna keep listening to um the way of kings currently kaladin is depressed um because of all of the deaths in bridge four and he hasn't yet learned why they uh, run bridges the way that they run and yasna has accepted shalon um to be her ward after her third attempt to get into her good graces all right guys so i just wrapped up at the gym and i'm about to head home and i'm in my car listening to the way of kings and i've just wrapped up part one so right now it's playing through the interludes um and and basically towards the end of part one we see kaladin get back his will to live so he approached the um the chasm where he was going to kill himself but then sil showed up and stopped him and he went back and confronted gaz i had forgotten all about gaz uh but gas is actually pretty important it, while kellen is a bridgeman and later on in the book if i remember correctly and so the first interlude that i'm wrapping up now is at the pier like um I didn't actually know, and I am still unsure exactly the role that the Peer Lake is going to play. I know that it comes up again, I believe in a later book. I can't quite remember. Hopefully by the time I'm done with all of these re-listens, I'll be able to put it together. Um, anyone that is familiar, feel free to let me know though. All right guys, it is officially the end of the night for me. It's after midnight, it's like 12. 6 a.m. and I think I'm gonna call it. I didn't actually read any physical books today. Um, it was mostly just the audiobook that I was listening to and I didn't feel like starting a book today for some reason. I just ended up getting on YouTube and watching videos there. I actually have real work to do tomorrow though so I'm hoping that I'll still be able to actually start a real physical like a like an actual book tomorrow see you guys then all right guys it is the next day tuesday august 4th and i'm just out on my afternoon walk and i'm still listening to the way of kings audiobook um right now we are being introduced to dalinar adelin and renarin and i think dalinar is probably i mean Cal probably is my ultimate favorite character but I really like Dalinar. He is probably the wisest character in the entire book series and Oathbringer, um, the second book was my favorite but Oathbringer was also high up there. That would be my second favorite. The first book even though it's good it, it's just really slow. Um, so yeah that's where I'm at right now. Um, didn't really have too much time to vlog today because I had real work to do um i had some classes and then i had some um client meetings as well on zoom and i just like to get out and move at least a little bit every single day so right now i'm going to walk about three miles and it should take me about an hour i do this at a very very leisurely pace um about halfway there's a starbucks i might stop in and grab a cool drink and then when i get home i'll probably treat myself to a strawberry banana and nutella crepe it's like my favorite dessert uh, maybe i'll include a picture of that if i do get to it tonight all right guys so i am about a little over um i'm pretty close to two miles in my walk and i turned around a little bit back there stopped by starbucks and picked up one of their summer drinks I think this is some sort of passion fruit lemonade. It's pretty good. Very sweet though. There's definitely a lot of sugar in here. Um, so yeah. And actually I just remembered that the one of my favorite characters from the book is Wit, the King's Wit. So basically in this book, the king keeps a whip because making fun of other people is beneath him. So this guy's sole job is basically to poke fun and insult the people in the kingdom. And he's so good at it. I love the wit so much. And that is my quick little update. Gonna finish this walk off and make my way home and hopefully um, take a quick shower and maybe uh, finally pick a new book to read tonight. So that'll be nice. It is Wednesday morning. It's about 10 a.m. 
and I'm just sitting here um, having some breakfast. I've got some coffee and I've got a chocolate croissant here. I don't know if you can see it, but these things are my absolute weakness because I mean chocolate and croissants, delicious. And so I wanted to update you guys on reading progress. So last night I actually did start and finish a book. I read Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. And this is an African-American classic and I needed to read it quickly because it was actually due back to my library in like two days, which is another way to get through books really fast is just procrastinate until it's like almost the due date. And this book reminded me a lot of The Color Purple actually. So there, the main character is a woman and at the beginning of the book, she arrives in a town that she had presumably left uh, earlier with a man and she's not with him anymore and so everyone's gossiping and trying to figure out well did he leave her because he was much younger than her um, so everyone thinks he was taking advantage of her for money and then he left her and so she sits down with her friend at her house and she is telling her the entire her entire life story and it starts with her as a young girl her uh, grandma is about to die and her grandmother's who raised her and she caught her kissing a boy so she thinks okay now you need to get married um, because I don't want you to be pregnant out of wedlock. And she thinks that she's going to eventually love the guy that she has to marry, but she finds that she doesn't. Um, and she's going through a series of guys over the course of this book. And she she lives a pretty um, hard life, but eventually you do get to see her, um, I guess, live some part of her life for herself in a way that she wants to and in a way that she feels like she deserves. So I was happy to get that. Overall, it was more of a tragic story than a happy one. Yeah, and I thought it was okay. I, I'm not a huge classics reader and I'm not a, um, you know, like I'm not an English literature kind of person. So I read these strictly for fun, not for major literary analysis. And, and that was my takeaway. I just thought that it was an okay book. I gave it uh, four stars, I believe, but it was a pretty soft four stars. I would say more like three and a half stars. And I wouldn't say that it was, um, like I didn't love it, but I also didn't hate it. And I, I don't regret reading it especially since it was such a short book anyway. If you were thinking about picking it up, then I, I think you should. I think you should read it for yourself, definitely. And so that's it for the book that I read last night. I finally, this is the third day of the vlog and I still don't have March because uh, Monday I missed the, the window. Yesterday they were closed. So today, today will be the day I hope to finally get my hands on that book and hopefully I can start reading that today. And I'm hoping to get through part two of the Way of Kings audiobook. I'm not sure I'll get that far. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. All right guys, success. So I just, I'm at my library and I finally got a hold of March, um, the graphic novel by John Lewis. And the nice thing is this actually applies for the Hardathon readathon that I'm doing this month. Um, I would I would assume that John Lewis would be a hero in resistance more so than education. So uh, resistance is technically Joe's domain, but I'm gonna gonna steal it for this book over here as well. And then my library is doing this thing where they give you a surprise bag of books in any genre that you choose, and it's like five books. So I asked them for contemporary romance since I normally use Kindle Unlimited for that, but my Kindle Unlimited expired. So uh, let's see what we got here. So Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. Um, okay, that looks interesting. I've got The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. And let's see, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. Now, I have heard a lot about this. I've seen this on BookTube a lot. So maybe this is something that I will definitely pick up. Um, the Romance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. This also looks really fascinating. I mean, I don't know anything about these books. Again, they were surprise picks by the librarians at the library. Um, but it's got book club in it and I like book club. So this should be interesting. And then the last one in here is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. I believe she's also the author of The Kiss Quotient and I haven't read either of those. Um, but again, another... I've seen this around booktube, so I think this is pretty popular. And so this might be at the top of my list as well. I'm surprised that I got these uh, pretty popular books. I would have imagined that these would have been on hold, but I guess not. Um, so this is fantastic. I've got some contemporary romances that I can throw in the mix of my reading whenever I am looking for something fun. And this is usually the genre that I go to when I need something like that. So. Now I need to take my car to a dealership. They finally, 
finally got the part in that I need to fix my AC so that I'm no longer baking in my car. Um, I think it's supposed to hit like 80 degrees this week, so I'm so glad that it finally came through. Morning, everyone. It is Thursday, and I want to talk about the books that I read yesterday. I actually read two books yesterday. But first, actually, I woke up to um, 1,000 subscribers. I got the email from YouTube confirming that I hit 1,000 subscribers, and that was a pretty awesome way to start the day. So I want to take a moment to thank everyone watching this video that is subscribed. It's still crazy to think that that many people subscribe to my channel, but I'm super grateful for all of the individual people behind that big number that watched my videos and decided to subscribe for them. And to all of you guys that continue to watch my videos, thank you so much. So the books that I read, um, I got through March, the uh, book one anyway, the graphic novel of John Lewis's early life. And this book was fantastic. If you are on the fence or considering reading it, I would highly encourage you to do so. Um, first of all, it's not that long. It's a graphic novel and it's about 121 pages. And I believe I read the entire thing in about an hour. And basically it actually begins on the day of Obama's first inauguration into the White House. So in January of 2009. And the, the way that the book is set up is that this mom and her two young boys walk into John Lewis's office and he begins to show them the pictures that are hanging up and tell his life story. It's actually a little bit comedic in the beginning, which I wasn't expecting. So for for example, he talks about how when he was younger, um, there were a bunch of chickens on his farm and he, because he wanted to be a preacher, he his the chickens would be his congregation and he would preach to them verses from the Bible. And it leads all the way into his early life in university where he met up with John Lewis and learn the principles of nonviolent protests and also the sit-ins that he was a part of. And I think that it's just so amazing to read about people like this who are so courageous in a way that most people never will be. And I certainly will never have or possess the amount of courage that he had and all of the other people that helped that were part of, of the sit-ins and, and faced the brutality of their fellow citizens, of the police officers. Um, just because they wanted to sit and eat food that they paid the same amount for. So yeah, definite hero. Uh, so this applies to the heart -a -thon. So I've so far knocked one book down for the heart -a -thon. I'm going to start I Am Malala probably sometime next week. I think I'll be able to get the book by then. And then I read Love Her or Loser. So this was part of the surprise bag of contemporary romance books that I picked up from my library yesterday. And I got through this entire thing yesterday um, and I gave this four stars. I, I should have mentioned that was a definite five star read, March. And I thought this was pretty good. So the um, book follows follows Rosie and Dominic Vega and they are a married couple and they've been married for about 10 years I think it was but they're having trouble in their marriage so Rosie feels like Dominic he's super silent and he, his idea of being a good husband is just to put his head down and provide um, but he doesn't even talk to her anymore and one day she has his revelation she comes home and decides that she wants to divorce him and that of course causes him to wake up and realize no he doesn't want her to go and begs her for a second chance and she decides that they're gonna visit this um this hippie marriage counselor to try to open up to each other. So even though they have like all of these communication issues, they also, but they have like mad sexual tension. Um, so that was never an issue in their marriage. And, and so the book is mostly just them working together to try to get back to where they were. Of course, there is discussion of love languages in here because they have very, very different love languages. Overall, I thought it was a pretty enjoyable read. I probably will. So there's another book in the series coming up, coming out. It says it's coming out in September of 2020. So, oh, that's next month. Wow, that was fast. I would pick that up. I enjoyed this book enough to definitely pick up more by this author. So those are the two books that I read last night. Um, I haven't decided what I'm gonna read next. I think I'm going to pick up Red, White, and Royal Blue. This was another romance that was in the um, surprise bag that I picked up. This, however, is an LGBTQ plus romance and I've never read one of those so this is high up on my list of books to start the only problem is i don't have the audiobook for it and there is a hold list for that particular audiobook um i started one of the reasons why i started with this one was because i got the audiobook it was available right away so we'll see about that i have um there's nothing on my kindle that urgently needs reading and by the way that was my first time reading a physical book in such a long time and as I was reading the book, I was like, you know, flipping through the pages. And like, when I came across a word, didn't I, I tried to like press
across it. That's how used to reading on the Kindle I am. And I gotta say, I, I did miss it because as it was getting dark, because I read at night, it was a lot harder to read the pages um, because it's not as well lit in, in my living room, whereas the Kindle provides its own light. So it reminded me how, how nice it is to read on a Kindle device. Yeah, I think I'll read that. I probably won't have too much time to read today because um, I've got reading to do for class. So technically I'm gonna be reading a few chapters out of this book, uh, Race, I'm Empire and English Language Teaching. I have about two weeks left in this class and then I will finally be done with my entire program actually so in about two to three weeks i will be a master of education so that's super exciting i just got to get through this this book is is quite dry i'm not gonna lie so yeah that is my reading progress and those are my plans for today i, I probably won't get much more reading then i'm hoping though to i'm not done with part two in the way of kings uh, i'm almost there though and so in part two so far we're seeing kaladin develop into a real leader and and that's probably one of my favorite things about Khaled and I did mention he's perhaps my ultimate favorite character um, but basically he's able to motivate all of the men in bridge four who have nothing to live for basically um, by being such a good example himself so like when he's like exercising and carrying the bridge when he's standing up during the bridge runs while everyone else has just collapsed he's just such a good leader and I love reading about him and his backstory so we're in the middle of Khaled and flashbacks as well so that's where I am with way of kings there's no way I'm gonna finish that by the end of this week but that's okay the first time I read it I think I read it in like two days because that that's kind of how I read books but this second time around I am just listening to it so it's a lot slower and and I'm liking that a little bit too so that is the plan I have actual work meetings today so I probably won't be checking in again but I'm hoping to wrap up this vlog tomorrow and gauge my success in my very first reading vlog so I will see you guys then all right guys so welcome back it is Friday morning Morning, and this is going to be the last day of this vlog in particular and I want to talk to you guys about two more books that I got done um, I read one last night and I got most of the way through the second one and finished it like an hour ago this morning and they were both great so let me tell you about them so the first book that I read was make time and this book is all about how to find um, more time in, in your schedule to do the things that matter to you and so they create this four-step framework for you to follow including um, picking a daily highlight so like the most important task of your day trying to remove all of the possible distractions that you can and this is mostly social media so they talk about these infinity pools things like YouTube basically where you can constantly refresh it and just be given more and more and more distractions um, keeping you from doing whatever it is that you really want to do the third part is energized and this is um, this has to do with both moving and eating so making sure that you provide that you take care of your body and not just your mind and then the last part is reflect so at the end of the day think about um, ask yourself whether or not you achieved your highlight and what tactics that you employed worked or didn't work I gave this book four stars I think that there is and most of the reviewers will say this and they're right there's nothing groundbreaking in this book however the authors create this actionable framework from things that they know work and they provide you with a bunch of tactics to try and I really like that because it gets you ready to implement it pretty much right away so like for example today I know that my highlight of the day is I have to get a proposal done for my final project and I have to write a paper that's due today at 8 p.m. it is currently almost noon and I'm probably Probably not going to start this paper until 6 p.m. which is like the absolute last minute that I can start and still get it done but it is probably the most important task that I have to do today aside from um, editing this vlog as well and I like the some of the tactics they give I admit some of them gave me anxiety so like turning off all notifications um, I'm not huge on social media so it was not a big deal to like log off of Instagram and um, Twitter but I I like knowing my emails as they come in so I'm used to those notifications and one of the things they want you to do is to turn off your email notifications and I mean they're right I don't get super urgent emails nothing that needs my immediate immediate attention and the uh, pop-ups are distracting so I think I think I'll try it um, yeah maybe later when I sit to write my paper and then the reflecting portion at the end I also really like um, just time to sit down and think about and your day basically so it's not all just flying flying by if you I don't know if any of you have heard of it or read it I I'm glad I read it and I'm definitely going to be testing it out and seeing if it will work for me particularly as um, 
I start to get busier toward the end of the month when we go back to school. So that was Make Time. And I read that one on my Kindle. It was a borrow from my library. And then the second book that I got started on last night, kept me up until 2 a.m. and then finished this morning was Bride Test by Helen Huang. I did not have high expectations going into this book because I didn't know anything about it. Again, this is one of the five books that came in the surprise um, surprise bag from my library. And to be honest, I didn't even read any of the blurbs for these books before just jumping into reading them. But this one took me by surprise with how much I loved the characters. I loved both the female and the male protagonist, which I feel like doesn't happen too much in contemporary romances. Usually I'm a fan of the female and then there's always something wrong with these male characters. Um, but in this book, the female protagonist, her name is Me slash Esme is her American name that she takes on when she gets to the United States. And she arrived because of the male protagonist's mom. So his name is Kai and his mom goes to Vietnam trying to find a woman for him to potentially marry because she's worried about him never getting married, basically. Um, Kai is autistic, and so Esme has to navigate that as she is becoming closer to him. And they eventually, and eventually um, decide whether or not they actually do want to get married. I read the author's note at the end of this, and I feel like if you read this book, reading the author's note is very important because she talks about how her mom influenced this book. Um, the main character, Esme, like I said, she does just immigrate to the United States. So she's a character who um, doesn't speak much English and she is less educated than those around her. And, and, and so you see her throughout the book fighting for things that other people might take for granted. And I think that's what I love so much about this character. She works so hard and gives up a lot of herself without sacrificing her pride and her goals. Definitely, this was a five-star read for me and I'm going to pick up the Kiss Quotient, which is also pretty highly rated. I think most people seem to like that one over this one. Um, if I like this one so much, I hope that I like that one. And speaking of which, I was looking at some of the reviews for this and I like to, whenever I read a book that I found really good, I like to look through the reviews and see what other people thought. And there was a comment that stood out for me because someone rated it low and they mentioned how they thought the main character was selfish because she has to leave her daughter behind in Vietnam when she comes to the United States and I suppose the reviewer thought that it meant she didn't love her daughter and I feel like I need to say the fact that that, that reviewer probably needs to recognize the privilege in saying something like that because leaving your child behind to travel to a new country is not an uncommon immigrant experience and it has nothing to do with not loving their children and throughout the book she talks about her daughter and um how everything she's doing is so that she can provide a better role model for her daughter and provide a better future for her daughter. One that she didn't have because she didn't even graduate high school. So yeah, it's, it's not a lack of love for her daughter. It's just the reality of the situation that she finds herself in. And it is a reality of many people's lives as well. So I just wanted to say that. So yeah, I just wrapped it up this morning and it was great. So that's second. That's the second of the five books that I read from my surprise bag. I think I was supposed to read Red, Right and Royal Blue next, but like I said, I don't have the audiobook for it, but I'm, I'm hoping to get it soon. So I think that that will be the next pickup. So far though, this ranks first and then Love Her or Lose Her, which is right here. So I'm gonna put this one second. Um, Bride Test was definitely better, I would say, than Love Her or Lose Her. And we'll see where Red, White, and Royal Blue ranks whenever I get around to it, probably um, next week. Because over the weekend, I'm gonna spend more time listening to the audiobook, The Way of Kings, since I'll be um, doing more chores. I do more chores over the weekend, and that's generally when I have more time to listen to audiobooks. All right, so that is it for my reading this week. I think I'm going to end the video here because from the footage that I've already edited, it seems like it's gonna be a little bit long. So we're just gonna stop here. Overall, I'm calling this a very, very successful week. I got through five books entirely and I am into part three of The Way of Kings. And to be fair, The Way of Kings is a thousand page book. So getting halfway through that is kind of like finishing another book. So, and two of those were full on five star reads. So I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully I'll get to filming more vlogs in the future. In the meantime, make sure to check out some of my other videos and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.